Hi there. Today we're going to be looking at what to do to actually write a free response question on the AP Computer Science free response part of the exam. So we're going to be looking at an updated version of the 2003 question about employees. We're going to go through the question, examine the basic components, and then write a solution looking at how we actually put together the different parts of the solution and writing it down. So let's go ahead and get started. First thing of course that we want to do is we want to read through the actual question itself. As you can see right here, uh, we have our header for the actual question itself and some information about the class. We take a look at it and says we're going to be having a company process the retirement of some employees. In this question, you're going to write methods that help determine, determine whether an employee is eligible to retire and to process the retirement of all eligible employees. Keeping with the idea of un <clears throat> Keeping with the idea of actually documenting what we need to do as we write it, we're going to go ahead and do an underline for both of those things. We'll determine whether an employee is eligible and process the retirement. Those are the two actions we are going to perform, so we're underlining them. As you can see right here in our employee class, we have a section of information right here where we have some getters right here. We have get age, get years on job, get salary, and get ID that are documented in the documentation comments as to what's happening. So the age and years, number of years working, the salary of the employee, and their ID. And there may be other information that's not shown. So we have this information that's given to us. The fact that this information is given to us as a method and data members that are public in visibility means that most likely we're going to be seeing these, thing, these methods in some other form in another part of the question. We look at our next page of the question. And we have our company class declared as follows. And so we have a, a com class company, so it's defined as a class, it's a company class. We have an employee list, and it's a dot size has the number of employees, and it's ascended order by employee ID. And it's an array list of employee type. So that means we have an array list that, of this employee object we previously saw over here. So we have a bunch of those in a list called employee list. We'll be using it most likely in the question since it's a data member for this. We have a private in retire age, retire years, and retire salary that's a private double, so we have some values that we are going to be comparing right here, age, sa years, and salary that could possibly compare to our existing stuff. We also have a private double salary budget, which is the total salary of all employees. Now if we go down and take a look through this, and we have an uh, example of our methods we're going to be looking at. We have our process retirements and our employee is eligible methods that we're going to be writing code for, as we can see for part A and B right here. And so for our part A method, we're going to, uh, employee is eligible and it's to be implemented. We're going to return true if the employee is eligible to retire, otherwise return false. We know that it, right then it even says so, that it's a Boolean method, so we know we're going to have to write a Boolean data member for it. We also have our employee eligible has been um, removed from our employee list. The employee list is resized. Well, since we're using an array list, that's automatic, so we don't have to worry about that. So that's going to be checked off just right there. And the employee list is remains sorted by employee ID. And depending on how we remove that, that shouldn't be a problem. And salary budget has been updated to reflect the remaining employees. So we want to make sure that we, under, we deal with dealing with our budget and we remove from employee list the ones that have been qualified for that. So we also have a note right here that may be constructors or methods that are not shown. We can't call on them. We only have access to what is given to us right here. So we then read a little bit further. It talks more about employee lists, saying it's sorted by ID and that all salaries are stored in salary budget, as we saw both right here and right here already. And then we have some more information stating that an employee is eligible for retirement if she or he meets at least two. So that's that key thing right here. We have to make sure we have at least two of them involved with the following requirements. At least retire age, at least retire salary, and at least retire years. Those three things, at least two of them must be um, evaluated as true. It doesn't matter if it's this one and this one, this one and this one, or this one and that one. We just have to make sure we have at least two of them happening. So we want to make sure we check for that as part of our method. As you can see right here, we have our employee is eligible method below. And so it says to return true if it's um, eligible to retire, otherwise return false. We have our he method header is given to us with a parameter given to us of current employee. The fact that we have current employee specified right here means we need to use it. It's a clue to us that this is a param as a parameter that is a value that is necessary for the actual method. Because it's a Boolean method, we know the first thing we want to do is give our our framework code so it will automatically compile and run, but it also gives us the ability to start earning points immediately. So let's go ahead and give our squiggles to start off. And our first line of code, because it's a Boolean method, we're going to make a Boolean variable. And because it's inside a method, we don't need to put private or anything right here because the visibility is only inside the method itself. And let's go ahead and call it is eligible. A nice way for naming 
variables that are of Boolean type as use a prefix or is or has because it automatically implies that there is a true or false value. And we'll set the default value on that to be false. And so by assigning a variable right here, we have it assigned to it a correct value. We assume false, which is the otherwise condition. And our last line of code, we're going to go down here and we'll simply write return. And then our data member or variable is eligible. So we automatically have a beginning where we have a correct value assigned inside our code. We have a valid return statement for the method as a whole written together. So we've got our framework for code, which should most likely earn us at least a point because we've defined a correct value and returned a correct value at the bottom of our method. So we have some basic framework. So now we want to take a look at the actual structure that we need to do. So again, we're going to look back up at our question and it returns a Boolean value which we've taken care of, that indicates whether the employee is eligible for retirement using the rules described above. So we have this right here. We have to meet at least two of these requirements. So we have retire age, retire years, retire salary. And because we're using this if right here, we have that nice little notification that we have an if, that means also inside our code over here, we also want to use an if. So let's go ahead and let's bring this screen up, or bring that page up here so we can have it so it's quickly available we're right here underneath our method so we can see it. And we have to test these three things. Each of those three things will want an if test attached to it. So we'll go ahead and write that right now. And so we have our keyword if, and we're gonna test on the company variable first, and then we'll check on that against our data member current employee that's been passed as a parameter. So we have that variable that's passed as a parameter we'll be able to check against, but we'll check it against our class variable first. So if our retire age, and we want to make sure that our current employee's age is at least retire age old. So if retire age is, if we're comparing against this, we want to make sure that our employee age is at least this age or possibly bigger. So if we have retire age and we want to compare that against employee, we'll be doing retire age as less than or equal to because we want to make it at least that retire age. Then we'll use the current employee and use its getter method to access its age. So we have if the retire age is greater than, or so is less than or equal to the employee's age. So if we're making sure that we're that current employee is at least that age or bigger, we're able to retire. We're gonna make a little way to keep track of that. And since we wanna keep track of at least two, that means, oh, I will also need a counter variable. So I'm gonna go up here and we'll make a counter. Counters are always ints. And we'll say counter. And if we make a mistake, it's easy just to scratch through it and move it on. So we int counter equals zero because that's the default value we want to start off with. So if our retire age is less than or equal to current employee.get age, we'll set counter equal to zero. No, we don't want to reset it to zero. We want to actually make sure we set our counter to go up by one. So we'll say counter plus plus. So we have if our retire age is less than or equal to current employee.getAge, we want to make our counter plus plus, which means it goes up by one. We also want to check to make sure that we have our retire years and retire salary. And since we want to check all three of these, we want to use an else if. We want to check them all three of them in sequence. So we'll continue with that if sequence right here. If, then parens, and we'll use retire salary. is less than or equal to, because we want to make sure that the current employee's value for salary is at least that value. So if the retire salary is at least that of the current employee's salary, we'll do the same step we just did, where we're gonna set counter plus plus So we'll have our counter variable go up by one and store back inside itself. And we'll repeat that process again. If, and then we have our age and salary, our last one we have to check is years. And we're gonna do current employee. And 
dot get years on job. And again, the same structure of code inside that where we'll set counter plus plus. So we have our counter starts off at zero. We've checked to make sure that our is eligible is set to false because we want to create a default value that's appropriate. We check our three different levels of doing that. If it p each time it passes one of those conditions, the counter variable is incremented by one positively. And now, if we simply return this right here, we've done part of the stuff. We won't get all of our points because we have skipped the pact of determining that it, whether they should be eligible or not. But we receive some points. But it's always best to do the best job we can. So we'll add that final point right here. And so now if and counter is greater than or equal to 2, we will assign the is eligible variable the value of true. So if we have at least two of those that have been returned true on those two those lines of code, we'll update our is eligible variable and we return it regardless of whether it's been changed or not. We don't have to have an else statement because we initialize the value to start off with with an appropriate value and there's only two possible values with a boolean either true or false and so we're good to go. So we now have our em employees eligible method. We're going to take a look at our header for this. We have a return a boolean value. We've done that and check to see if they're eligible retirement using the rules above. We check for retire age. We check for retire years and we check for retire salary. We're using the at least on all three of them. We're making sure that it's if not equal to or greater. And we use an if test for all of those. So we've got that and provided it makes it we return true if they're eligible to retire. All of the components of that question have been answered. So let's go ahead and look at part B of our question. In part B, we have our company method again called process retirements as we saw earlier up here in the previous question. And this is going to remove all of our employee eligible um, retirement, eligible employees from the employee array list, employee list. It's going to resize or shrink employee list as appropriate. Since we're using an array list, anytime we call remove, employee list will automatically be updated. So we don't have to worry about that. It's going to decrease our salary budget to reflect the salary of the remaining employees. So we want to make sure we always update salary budget from our salary. And in writing process retirements, we must call employee is eligible. So it's telling us right here that we need to call that method. Again, anytime you see a previous method in the free response question, we want to make sure we use it again when we're asked about that same functionality in our code. Specify in part A. Again, it says assume it's working. Even if you didn't work it right or correctly, we'll assume it works properly here in part B. This is a void method, so we don't have a return statement to start writing, but we will go ahead and give ourselves our squiggles to get this going. And so we have our post conditions, the things we have to accomplish. So we're going to have a all employment eligible employees have been removed from the employee list. Since we want to get rid of all of them from a list, that implies we need to look over the list, which means we're going to be using a loop. So I will be using a for loop for this. You could use a while loop, but a for loop is really good because it tells us exactly where we need to go. So we're going to make a for loop. And we are going to have it start off at zero because that's where our array lists start. And we'll check our spot variable against the size of the list. And then our last thing will be to spot plus plus. We want to go up by one. So we want to go through the list one at a time, starting at zero all the way through to the end. And we want to go ahead and check to see if that current employee is eligible to be removed. So we are going to get an employee variable. because we don't have a parameter specified up here. We have to define one inside our code itself. And we're going to say it's equal to employee list dot get passing its spot. So we have our current employee that we're dealing with. It's the one that's at that current spot of the, co of the list. And we want to check to see if this current employee is eligible to hire. 
and the Ellsworth Hire method belongs to our our company class, and we want to use that employee is eligible method that we've already written and used already in Part A. So we want to check to see if it is, we want to remove them. So we'll use an if test again because when we check for something we use an if. So if the employee is eligible method, passing it that current employee. So we have that. If that returns true, we want to remove them from the list. So we do our squiggles to do that. And we're going to call employee list. Dot remove, because that's the method we call on an array list. Make sure we use the array list method, not overwriting something out of an array. We're going to use parens and pass it our parameter that we're at, in this case, spot. And if we simply close this right here, we're going to we will remove this employee, but the, sp the employee that's after spot, if there are any, will be shoved into spot's location, which because our list will shrink down. Because that's the case, we need to make sure we update spot appropriately so we can get through and hit all of the parts in the list. So we're going to add a line of code right here, and we'll do spot minus minus. So we can make sure spot goes back down, because at the end of the loop, we always have our increment happen up here as well. So inside our if test, we have that basic chunk right here where we're going to remove them from the list if they pass that test. Spot goes down. We'll go back through and repeat through the list, grabbing the next employee and removing as necessary. So our for loop right there is complete since we're doing just one thing in our for loop. That gets us for the first part where we've gone all retirement eligible employees have been removed from the employee list. That part is checked. We still have to make sure that we have that the salary budget needs to be updated to reflect the remaining employees. And I chose to do this as a separate loop just to make sure it happens properly. We have two separate sets of instructions and just to keep it clean. So we're going to loop over that same employee list, but this time we're going to update our variable for our salary budget, but we need to make one a new one. So we're going to say double updated budget equals 0, 0.00. That gives us a nice framework for what our value is for our double. Gets us two decimals of precision. We know where we're headed with that. And we're going to go through and we're going to loop over that same loop, but this time we're going to update our salary list. So we're going to go for and parens. And we'll use a for each loop on this because we can go through all of the employees in that list and simply just update. And so in this case, using a for each, we'll do employee current colon employee list so now we're going to go for every employee inside the employee list we want to do something in this case we want to grab their salary and add it to our updated budget variable so we'll say updated budget plus equals to store back inside itself and current dot get salary. So that will go through every single employee in the employee list based on that current employee's salary method. We'll add that to our updated budget. That loops over automatically based on size. We don't have to worry about a position on this one since we're using that for each loop. We couldn't use it up here because we had that modification we were removing from it. And then we just need to make sure we take updated budget and assign it into our salary budget variable. So salary budget equals updated budget. So we've checked that one off as well. Again, looking through our question, what we are asked to do. We have a process retirements method which removes all retirement eligible employees. So if they're eligible, we remove them from the employee list, it shrinks it. That happens automatically. We don't have to do anything there. And decreases salary budget to reflect the salary of the remaining employees. So we take our salary budget, start it off at zero, go through every sal employee in the list, grab their salary, and assign it to our updated budget, replace that value in a salary budget. We called employee is eligible inside our if test, so we know that we've used that existing method right there. And so we have our code ready to go. 
This is a void method, so we have no return statement. Our two components of action that had to happen within the project are done. We also showed it using a for loop standard on the top to iterate through all of the employees in the list, removing as necessary, since we can't remove using a for each. And then to show the process of going through and actually removing, um, excuse me, to show the process of updating the salary for that, we define, define a double variable at 0.00, .00 so we can get some nice precision. And based on every employee inside that list, we grabbed their salary and added it to the budget and then replaced that variable into salary budget. Those have hit all the components of that. And so we've gone through and solved that problem as a class. So as you can see, the steps we take to do this, we look at our existing methods that are given to us in our uh, documentation for it. We look at the methods that are attached to the employee class for this case. We then look at our company class files and method where we have that data member of the employee list, the data members for the values we had to deal with to check against the um, eligibility, and finding that salary budget variable we had to access so we could update that appropriately. Generally the case may be, again, if they give us information in either as a data member or as a parameter, that is information we must use. That often also says that we must use information if we are have a part A method, it's gonna be used in part B. So we wanna make sure that we have those two methods when they call each other or use each other, we make sure we do call them appropriately. We have those rules we checked and we're good to go.